Sometimes a place draws you to it. It tugs at you until you give it your full attention and heed its call. The ancient Iron Age hill fort of St. Catherine's Hill in Hampshire has been calling to me for a while now. Beneath the full moon this Easter Friday night, I climbed to the summit of this special place with a friend, Steve. We felt our way carefully over the steep, uneven earth in the dark and found a place to sleep. Whenever I wild camp, my priority is to be as respectful of the place as possible. I'm a guest of the land, of the wildlife, of the ancestors of this place. I visit gently on the earth and I leave nothing behind me of my presence other than my gratitude. That's what the wild camping ethos of Leave No Trace means to me. It was a cold, icy night and I got about two hours sleep. Yeah, very tired, very cold. We've had stars, clear skies all night. Just at the time of the pre-sunrise moment, a deep fog has descended. After waking in the dawn, I looked for the sun, thinking of the people who came before me over the centuries who have watched from this hill for it to rise and bring them another day. I'm joined by another friend, David. This hill has been rich with meaning since people first lived here 3,000 years ago, long before the city of Winchester was built below it. After the ancient Celtic Druidic people and after the Iron Age hill fort was long reduced to its ramparts, in the 12th century a Norman chapel was built at the centre of where the beech grove grows on the summit. The chapel was called St Catherine's, giving the hill its name. All that remains of it now are a few scattered stones amongst the trees. The feeling of the past is almost tangible here. Beneath the hill to the east is Plague Pits Valley where mass graves were dug for all the bodies from the Great Plague to be thrown unceremoniously once the cemeteries were all full. I walk through the misty dawn searching for the elusive sun, catching occasional glimpses of rabbits and calls of birds. Awareness of time and history expands here into this moment where suddenly the light of the sun appears visible above the fog. The same sun that has shone on all of us who have ever lived. Returning from my sunrise wonder, I saw a woman who had just arrived up the hill. I immediately warmed to her presence and when she approached us it felt totally the right thing to join her in the service and silent contemplation that she had come here for. It can be wonderful when strangers meet, perhaps of different faiths or none, but connecting with the intention of sharing reverence, love and honouring the living presence of whatever name we place upon our source of hope and our spiritual truth. So we've had a wonderful experience this morning, out of the mist, coming up the hill. We've met Irene, who gave us the opportunity to join her. Um, yeah, I would normally be, have been here together with Hiko, an uh, 86-year-old man who is unfortunately got a breakage in his shin, and maybe a few other people to have our 20-minute silent light worship before Easter we had it on certain times in the year he arranges this with very great care and signposts and everything 20 minutes silence with a bit of liturgy it started off many years ago in the cathedral with 20 minutes silence and uh, and prayer and he thought it would be good to have it outdoors and I promised him I would do that for him today with and was looking forward to the quiet time just on my own and meet these wonderful people who shared the silence with me and the prayer and it's been very very meaningful today thank you thank you
A beautiful feature of this hill is the Mismaze, a rectangular labyrinth cut into the chalk beneath the summit at the side of the beech copse. Its medieval design is thought to have been cut in the 17th century. Unlike a maze which is designed to confuse you, the labyrinth is one continuous winding path to the centre so that your body can just follow it, leaving your mind free. It's traditionally connected to spiritual practice and mostly in recent times is used for personal reflection, meditative walking and resolving questions that you bring to it. Or of course for playing and running along, especially if you're a child. It's 624 metres took me about 20 minutes to walk in and out. My visit has felt nourishing and renewing, magical and holy. I celebrate what humans have always celebrated, the return of the light and the return of life. I leave with my heart feeling a little bigger and a little more golden.